a meeting or event is to take place. It recognises the continuing connection of Aboriginal people to country and is commonly delivered by both Indigenous and non-Indigenous peoples. It is a practice that is commonly conducted at meetings or events within the university. Therefore, I would like to show my respects and acknowledge the Bedigal, Gadigal and Yanawar people who are the traditional custodians of the unceded land on which UNSW campuses stand. I would also like to pay my respects to the elders, both past and present, and extend that respect to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders who are joining us today. Our Vice Chancellor and President, Professor, Professor Attila Brungs, has been connected to UNSW for a long time, growing up in Sydney and occasionally coming to campus with his father, who was a professor in the School of Chemical Engineering and Industrial Chemistry, a UNSW graduate. So it was no surprise that Attila Hooch should choose to study industrial chemistry here, taking after his father and also his mother, who has a Bachelor of Science in Biology from UNSW. Attila graduated with a Bachelor of Science too, winning the prestigious University Medal in Industrial Chemistry and going as a Rhodes Scholar to Oxford, where he attained a PhD in inorganic chemistry. After a four year stint at McKinsey and Co, working around the globe, he went on to senior roles at CSIRO, dedicating eight years to supporting the national research effort. He then moved on to a distinguished career in higher education as the Deputy Vice-Chancellor of Research and then Vice-Chancellor at the University of Technology, Sydney. Professor Brungs began as Vice-Chancellor of UNSW at the beginning of 2022, returning to his academic home. He passionately believes that, UN that universities exist to have a positive impact on the world around us. He's dedicated to making the student experience at UNSW the best it can be, providing world-class research and education, a vibrant university life, and welcoming, inclusive culture. RVC is an approachable, engaging leader with a true commitment to the UNSW community. It's wonderful students, outstanding staff, and proud alumni all around the world. Please join me in welcoming UNSW's Vice Chancellor and President, Professor Brungs, to deliver his welcoming address. Thank you for that lovely welcome. And a very warm welcome to you all. It is so fantastic to see so many incredible people in this hall today. I too would like to start by, again, paying my respects to the Bidjigal people. You've honoured us this morning by welcoming us to their ancestral lands through the smoking ceremony. And as I said then, the Bidjigal people have been the custodians of knowledge on this land for tens of thousands of years, an incredible heritage to draw upon as a university. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It is truly wonderful that you've chosen to join us here at UNSW. And welcome back for those who, who are back to our study again. In particular today, we've got a lot of learning abroad and exchange students who are coming to UNSW for the first time this term. I think you picked a particularly spectacular time to be in Sydney. I always love spring and summer, but then I'm biased. I've lived here most of my life. But it is a beautiful time of year. You've come to UNSW to follow your dream. And our job and the job of all the people here at UNSW is quite simple. It's how do we help you? How do we support you in reaching that dream? I also congratulate you because you've been accepted into our world-class university. You're here because you've worked hard, applied yourself, and often because people around you believed in you. And I noticed some of your wonderful supporters here as, as well today. I think you've made an excellent choice. You've probably heard from my bio that I'm biased, not just because I'm the vice chancellor here, but because I was also a student here. Back in the dim, dark history, back in 1990, I was sitting in exactly that chair for my own welcome to the university. None of my friends had come to this university. I was wondering around what the hell was happening. Can I guarantee I had a fantastic time? The university is a very welcoming place. So it is with particular excitement that I welcome here because I know whoever that is in that chair will have a wonderful time. Similar people in that chair and that chair because the university is a very special place. It is a world leading university, yes. It's one of the top universities in the world. Sure, number 19. But more importantly, it is a community. It is a warm, passionate, inspirational community. Universities are very special places. You already know that you're here for the education, but 
I also ask you while you're here to find out some more of the incredible research we do, to get involved in the university, because public universities like UNSW exist for one thing only, and that is for the public good. Everything we do at UNSW, all the education, all the research, all the support of you, is about how do we make the world a better place. You are the change makers who go out and transform the world. So our vision, which is now your vision too, is how do we improve lives globally through innovative research, transformative education, and most importantly, a commitment to a just and equitable society. While you're here, you'll be taught by academics who are leaders in their field, worldwide leaders in, a, your, in their field. You'll be taught by professional staff and supported by those who are absolutely focused on making sure your experience here at UNSW is a positive one. We'll even support you for what comes after university. You'll gain knowledge and experience, critical thinking, applied skills, prepare for the jobs of the future, the jobs of today. We've got work integrated learning all the way through our curriculum. One of the things we're very, very proud of at UNSW is that we are the university that has and has had for many years produced the most employable graduates in Australia. And that means that UNSW is 100% committed to doing what we can to improve experience for you and to make sure that your time here is the best it can possibly be. Now, university life is a time of personal growth and discovery, time to expand your mind, time to answer some of the big questions you may not have had time to think about before, time to address some of the biggest challenges in society. And I ask you all, don't wait for tomorrow, don't wait for your graduate. Society needs your big thoughts right now. So as part of making sure that you've got a wonderful experience, I ask you to throw yourself into university life. We've just kicked off our week. Don't get me wrong, the university has incredible curriculum developed by incredibly passionate educators. But if that's the only thing you do at university, I think perhaps you may have wasted a little bit of an opportunity there. We have over 300 clubs, sports and societies. We have the most number of student engagement of any university in the country. I know for myself that I toss myself in the clubs and societies and many of the skills, many of the people I know today came through those clubs and societies that I joined and I love being a part of during my time here at UNSW. So you'll forget everything I say today. I'm saying what about that. But if you can remember a couple of things. One is, please, please think about expanding your horizon. Think about joining a club, doing something different that you may not otherwise have tried. One other thing I'd like you to remember, and you'll forget everything else, is as much as I want you to have safety and fun on campus, I also really want you to be safe. We strive to make sure that UNSW is a safe, inclusive, and respectful place, and you as our newest members of our wonderful community, you too carry that responsibility now. Because each and every one of us is responsible for making this a safe community students and staff alike. I am committed to that. All the leaders and all the staff and colleagues at UNSW are committed to that. The individual who I gave uh, last week a long service award who'd been here for 37 years, has been doing it for 37 years. But you as the newest members of our community are also responsible for this. So please commit to that. Know the code of conduct, student code of conduct, so there is no doubt of the behavior that we expect of you, but importantly, the behaviour that you can expect of others to make sure that you have a safe, secure, inclusive, respectful and fun place for the next few years. Please, take care of each other. So as I said, the university presents many opportunities and I can assure you there are times, and there were times when I was here, that I felt a bit overwhelmed. Rest assured you are not alone. It is okay to ask for help. We have incredibly caring people across the campus who will help support you, whatever the issue may be, and help you get back on track. We have support mechanisms to help you succeed and thrive. But again, it's okay to feel overwhelmed. It's okay to ask for help. But in closing, I'll leave you with these thoughts. Please be open to new ideas. Be curious. Think critically. Immerse yourself in the awesome experience that will be the next few years of your time here at UNSW. And once again, a very warm welcome to you all. Thank you. I'd like to thank Professor Attila Bruns for his wise and encouraging words for our new students. 
Starting university, whether it be undergraduate or postgraduate study, whilst very exciting, can also be scary, stressful, and a little overwhelming at times. Our next, our next guest speaker, Harshin Parawal, was in your shoes when she started her first time at, univers at UNSW, and she will be discussing what her first term at UNSW was like, as well as sharing some of her tips to help you transition into life at UNSW as smoothly as possible. Harshin is a first year student, currently studying a double degree in a Bachelor of Arts and Bachelor of Commerce. Since commencing her studies in Term 1, 2023, she has enjoyed getting involved in wider UNSW communities. Harshin has volunteered with the Peer Connections Group as a cultural mentor, helping international students settle into their first term, and also works with the TEDx UNSW Society as marketing subcommittee member. In her spare time, she also enjoys film photography and reading. Thank you for that wonderful introduction. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to UNSW. My name is Harshin, and I too would like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land upon which we are meeting today. I'm about to commence my third term here at UNSW, studying a Bachelor of Arts and Bachelor of Commerce. Not too long ago, I too was sitting in this auditorium, listening to similar speeches and experiencing the mix of nerves and excitement you may be experiencing today. I can't define what your time here will look like, nor can I tell you what the ideal university experience is. But what I can tell you is that that is the exact beauty of the university experience. No matter where you are coming from or what you are here to achieve at UNSW, it's now entirely in your hands. If there is one thing you should take away from my experience today, it's that the first term is really just you figuring out what uni will look like for you. I'll start with the summary of my first time here at UNSW. Um, I know, and as I came into O Week, just as you might have last year, UNSW is well known for its wide range of societies and amazing social life. So my O Week experience did not disappoint. From a number of faculty welcomes across the campus to the long strip of society stalls that you may see today, there was so much to experience. I spent my O week signing up to societies that I could see myself joining, following the Instagram pages and Facebook pages of any societies that sparked my interest, and also taking the time to find my classes on campus using my timetable. I highly recommend you take out the time to do the same, as it definitely got me in the mood to engage and really participate in university. As you can see on the screen, my first term exposed me to a range of environments, and I learned new skills from week one, figuring out how to do uni assignments, side note, having a class buddy is the best thing you can do for yourself at uni, and I really just found a routine that suited me best. So some general organisation tips that I learned from my first three terms here is to use a organisation tool to keep on top of your deadlines and really stay organised. For example, people use Notion, Google Calendar or Apple Calendar. It's some of the most basic organisation techniques, but it can take you so far in this busy term. There's also a um, discussion group on Facebook called the UNSW Discussion Group. This is a community page where society events and general community info is posted to always keep you updated. I now want to present a typical academic timeline of how your first term might go, as you can see on the screen. Week one is icebreakers on icebreakers. They might seem daunting as introductory activities, but they're really useful in finding a class buddy and getting to know people with a similar study path as you. Campus tours also run during O week and week one of the term to help you find where you're going. Lost on Campus is also a really great app to find specific classrooms, or you could simply Google it and the top link will always be the UNSW website. Week two, write those assessment down. You will thank me later. Week three is all about keeping up with notes and really engaging with the teaching staff. You may have some quizzes or smaller assessments during this week. And now week four, pull through with the lectures and tutorials. It may seem easy to miss a few classes here and there in the lead up to flexibility week, but your future self will thank you for your commitment and your attendance over the time. So for the next slide, um, we're nearly there. It's now week five. Midterm assessments, also known as your first major assessments, this can be a quiz or an assignment, are usually happening around this time. They're 
always worth a good percentage of your total grade in the course, so getting ahead earlier on will really help your grades. So how can you do well in university assessments? Engaging with your teaching staff, posting questions on Moodle, and making the most of the Moodle resources are the best way to know if you're on the right track. It can definitely be hard to figure out how to first begin with this first round of assessments, but there are many, many resources available to you all. Week six, alas, you have a break. It's called Flexibility Week, but don't take your foot off the pedal just yet. Do use this time to catch up on sleep, improve your social life, or just enjoy some time for yourself. But don't forget how valuable this week is. Use this time to catch up on any missed content as there are exams and assessments happening before and after this period. Many societies also run events during this term which are open to everyone. So if you want to improve your social life, this is a good way to kind of use your break. Moving on to the next slide, week seven is when midterm assessments continue. Societies run study sessions, which are a great way to stay on top of your assessments, be in a productive space, but also not have to keep resorting to the same study methods. In week eight, we've made it to stress less week. So the goal is to stress less. Week eight is a really great time to ensure you contact your lecturers and tutors and other teaching staff to clear any doubts about content covered. Societies hold lots of fun events on campus, so check these out either using Facebook, Instagram, or just reaching out to people you know that attend society events, and it'll make your week that much better. I know ARC always sets up amazing stalls on the quad, such as games and painting and other interactive activities to really lift everyone's spirits on campus. Week nine, so the end is in sight, but don't lose your focus as this is where all the hard work you've done over the term will pay off. The deadlines may be overwhelming, but it's the time for end of term assessment, so you know you can really wrap up your grades on a good note. And now we're at week 10, you've done it. It's the end of regular classes, so thank your teaching staff and yourself for the hard work you've dedicated over the term. If you don't have a final exam or assessment, which you'll find if you do on Moodle, um, you're officially done for the term. But if you're not done yet, there is exams. So exams span over a few weeks. So do check your exam schedule, and this will be sent to your email connected to your ZID email address. There's also an assessment guide get, that gets posted on Moodle for each individual course that you have, and they'll tell you what to expect. Another tip to do is to go to the MyUNSW portal, which you would have set up when you first enrolled at the university, and click on My Student Profile. This will take you to the main page that has all your fee information and all the headings on the side. And the heading you want to look out for is View My Exam Timetable. This is your personalized exam timetable, which will tell you everything you need to know about what is happening with your exams. There's two main things to confirm here. The mode of delivery, so what's the location, how are you doing the exam, whether it's in person, online, or on a certain software. Also the time, so there is usually a locked in browser or a certain time by which you have to complete the exam, so all that information will be under this heading. But it is your first term, so what do you actually do for university exams? The main thing is to find study methods that work for you. There's a range of options as you can see on the screen. There's group study versus individual study, cafes, the main library at UNSW, and all the other study spaces available on campus, or even community libraries. Practice questions and exams are usually provided by your teaching staff, and these will be your best friend because they literally replicate exactly what they're gonna assess you on. And there's also past classes available across the time, which I'll get into shortly. But the main thing is to not stress too much, as it's the first round of exams, and even across the term, you're figuring things out, so it's just about figuring out what works for you best. Moving on to the next slide. So now that you know what to expect when going into the term, how can you find a balance without sacrificing your social life? The best thing to do is get involved. The process on the screen is a summary of what myself and a lot of my uni friends have done over this year to figure out how to pick between the 300 plus societies and um, activities we have on campus. The first thing is you pick your interest and what society speaks most to you. This could be an academic society related to your degree, one based on a hobby you might have coming into uni, or even one that just vaguely sounds interesting and you wanna learn more about. Then pick your commitment level. You can actually be a society member and just attend events, so you don't have to be a committed member. You just look out for the events that might be on social media and you can attend them if they're open for all. Or you can join a subcommittee, which means you'll be one of the members planning and carrying out these events. 
and even work your way up to executive positions where over time you'll be like the director of these societies and you'll be leading them through these different events. Some society events, as I've just mentioned, will be open for all students, especially those during Flexibility Week. So you can attend whichever society events you please, not just the ones that you've signed up for during O Week. Personally, I focused more on figuring out the academic side of my uni in my first term, as I found the jump from high school to uni slightly daunting. I also attended casual events, however, and I recommend that even if you're focused on your ac academics for this first term, you do take the time to really just see some events for yourself. ARC runs a lot of events on campus which are open for all, so even if you just stop by for five minutes and meet a few people and just say hello, you'll be one step further than you were the day before. However, in my second term, I decided I wanted to be more involved in the community and make the most of my university experience. I joined the Cultural Mentoring Program, which as mentioned is for international students and guiding them through their first term at uni, because the idea of helping them settle into university and learn how life in Sydney is like sparked my interest as I had just gone through that process one term prior. I also joined the TEDx UNSW Society to expand my skill set and work towards larger community events. You might know exactly where you'd like to go for your first term, or you may take some time to adjust just like I did. But since joining, I've met so many amazing people with unique cultures and experiences and backgrounds, and that really just goes to show what the benefits of doing extracurriculars, even if it's casually, are. For the next slide, um, we'll move on to some specific advice. As an undergraduate and domestic student, my experience might look different to yours. So I wanted to take the time to provide some specialized information for the different services that UNSW offers for different groups. For international students, there's a lot of academic and social support. Feel free to take a photo or scan the QR codes for the relevant um, websites. So the UNSW Student Support Advisors, they help you navigate UNSW policies, especially those about appeals um, and more on the academic side, but they also help you with exam preparation or general classwork that you might be struggling with. If you're struggling to keep up or just understand what the process is like of going through this term, they'll also, also support you through that. But on the social side, there is so much more to see. The cultural mentoring program, which as I've mentioned, I'm involved in, is targeted towards first year students, either in postgrad or undergrad, who'd like some advice for settling into UNSW and life in Sydney. There's lots of events during the term that this program offers that are open to all international students. So it's a great place to make friends with people on similar journeys, even if they're not from the same country as you. There's also the Let's Communicate program, which is English speaking and writing support for those who want to practice their English skills. Now for the next slide. For postgrad students, we have a postgraduate council set up by ARC to address all your needs and concerns. There's a lot of events during the term to connect you with other postgrad students, as well as an exclusive postgrad study space in level four of the main library. There's also a postgraduate lounge available near the ARC reception. So what's some general advice that I can give for you all today, just to really wrap up what I've gone through? So the main thing is join societies or attend uni events. It'll help you meet people outside of your classes that may have similar interests but aren't in the same stream as you. UNSW has many support systems in place for the academic side as well, also for life in Australia and navigating your career, so what life will look like after you've graduated. The Nucleus Hub is based in the main library or you could access their online services as well. Student advisors are available for all the faculties, and there's also the postgraduate council as mentioned. Your teaching staff is a really great way to connect to people that you already know, whether it's your tutor that you see every week online or um, on campus, but also past classes. So this is what something I wanted to emphasize, because the extra classes run during the term for your specific course. So if you're struggling to really understand the content, or you had some questions that you couldn't quite ask during your tutorials, you'd attend these past classes, it's listed on Moodle, um, and just to get extra resources. So ultimately, I'm a first generation university student, and in my immediate family, who immigrated from Punjab in India, no generation before mine has graduated with a bachelor's degree. You may have a similar story, or yours may be completely different. Regardless, I highly encourage you all to find what motivates you to continue across the years that you'll spend at UNSW. And if there's just one thing to take away from my speech today, it's that you'll be fine. Take the time to find out what works for you and what doesn't. Remember those assessment deadlines, speaking from experience, and just don't forget to enjoy it. Thank you.
Thank you so much, Hashin, for sharing your experience on your first term at UNSW. I definitely remember feeling a lot of the same things that you did in that first term. As a student, I know firsthand about how confusing and overwhelming your first year at UNSW can be. And I really encourage you to take advantage of all of the services that we offer here at UNSW. So this leads us to the next part of our event, the Prepping for Success panel, where we will introduce you to a range of different university systems, services, and tools to help you through that journey throughout university. But before we move on to that, I just wanted to run you through a quick guide on how to speak UNSW. On the screen, you'll see some key terms which you'll hear or may have already heard today. Your program is your degree. Specialization, or sometimes referred to as a major or minor, is your area of academic focus within that program. And the course is a subject that you take. As an example, your program might be a Bachelor of Engineering and your specialization or major could be chemical engineering, and your course could be engineering chemistry 1A. It's important to note that most courses will have a couple of different types of classes, so your class could have lectures, tutorials, labs, all sorts of things. The academics who will teach you are your course convener, so this is the person with the overall responsibility for the course. They may also be the lecturer for the course, the course convener is the first person that you should go to with questions about assignments, content, and exams. Your lecturer is the person who delivers your lecture content if your course has lectures, whereas your tutor is responsible for your tutorials, which may involve class activities, group work, and discussions. Acronyms are pretty common at the university, but one you'll want to know straight away is UOC, or units of credit. You get credit for each course you take and need a certain amount of UOC to graduate. Usually, courses are worth six units of credit. During O Week, you're also likely to attend a faculty or school welcome. Your faculty will be one of the six that we have at UNSW, and your school sits within the faculty. If we use the same example of the Bachelor of Chemical Engineering, it sits within the Faculty of Engineering and the School of Chemical Engineering. Now let's jump into our Prepping for Success panel, where you'll hear from a range of areas across the university, with everything from support systems to representatives from the teams behind our university systems and platforms. Once we've heard from all the services, we'll answer some of your questions via our Slido. Please scan the QR code now or go to the link on the screen to start submitting your questions. You can also upvote questions by giving them a thumbs up. This is where you might want to pop some more of those words or acronyms if you don't know what they are. At the end of this event, please join us outside for a free morning tea at our fundamentals fair, where you'll be able to visit the teams that you would have heard from at the panel and get more personalized information and have any more of your questions answered at the information stores. We also have teams from Academic Skills, the Equitable Learning Service, and ARC who will have fair tables outside for you to visit at the end of this panel. So now, without further ado, I would like to invite our panelists to join me on the stage. First, we've got Employability. Thank you. <laughs> Tracy Ellis from Student Support. From the Library, we have Cindy Christie. From Moodle, we have Abdullah Zubair. From Nucleus, we have Fiona Zhao. And finally, from ARC, we have Jamie Chalmers. Hi everyone, my name is Jamie Chambers, my pronouns are he, him. I come from ARC, I work in the clubs team. So all the clubs and societies you've heard about today, I am one of the clubs coordinators and I help support the over 300 clubs that we have here at UNSW. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Abdullah. I work in uh, education and technology support. So mostly our team look after the support aspects of Moodle, Tanitin and all those. So, uh, we do support both staff and students but mostly we support the staff as well. 
Hi everyone, I'm, uh, my name is Cindy. I'm one of the librarians from uh, UNSW Libraries. I'm here to answer any questions about library and if you have any questions about available support for students. Hi everyone, my name's Tracy. I'm from the student support team and we're here to support you as a, as a human being, as a person, not just as a student in a, in a holistic way. Uh, you might come to us uh, for some proactive reasons in in talking about how you might plan your life in general as a student and all the things that come with that and outside of being a student in your other, other part of your life. You might come to us if you've got any concerns or if there's any life events that are impacting you as a student and you need to talk to someone about what you might need, where you need to go uh, and just having a, convers a confidential conversation with somebody. Hi everyone, my name's Catherine Peake. I'm a career coach and I'm from UNSW Employability. Uh, welcome, it's amazing to see you all here today, I've got to say. Uh, I, our area helps students with their career planning and decision making, so we offer one-on-one -on -one, uh, career coaching sessions which you can access once a week, up to two years after graduation. Uh, we also run programs um, such as mentoring programs and career discovery programs, uh, and we also work with faculties as well and have work integrated learning programs to support your employability. Thanks everyone. Hi, my name is Fiona and I work at the Nuclear Student Hub. You might know us this week in particular because you'll probably visit us to get your new ID card, but otherwise we're kind of a one-stop shop. You can come to us with any sort of question about your uni experience, about your enrolment, when you graduate, if you need documentation, all that kind of thing. Um, if we can't answer your question, we will direct you to the best point of contact. So if you don't know where to go, come to us in the first instance. Um, there is an app available in the all the app store which is Moodle app. We'll suggest not to use that because that in our UNSW, the Moodle version that we use, it does not native the support. However, you can use your mobile Chrome browser which works exactly the same way and it'll give you better experience. So do not use app, use your browser to access Moodle in your phone. Thank you. So I can talk to it first. Uh, be like benefits as being a student here at UNSW. Um, well, of course, the first thing you should do is join up. Uh, you, get, uh, you get many, many benefits um, through joining us. Uh, we are the equivalent of, so we are the student organization here at UNSW. Uh, if you've been to any other school, we're the equivalent of the student union. Uh, so we are pretty much entirely comprised of students or people who were students. Uh, some of the benefits, um, particularly in the free food department, is that we, the Cobbles and Societies run free food like almost every other day. ARC itself runs barbecues um, every single Wednesday. So every single Wednesday down on the quadrangle, come down and get some free food. Uh, there's OSA services. Uh, we run volunteering programs like um, Wellness Warriors and a street team who also do uh, free food and goodie bags and support services all term every single week. Um, we also run a service called Food Hub, which is down by the UNSW terraces, uh, nearby where IJ and GYG is. Uh, food Hub is basically a service where we are, ARC is donated food, and then we give that back to you as a free grocery run. Uh, so you just come down there, line up, and show us your student ID with your ARC sticker, and we'll be able to provide you with free food. Um, but in terms of, we have a million other services, so I'll let someone else speak. <laughs> Well, I might, from an employability perspective, <laughs> um, where we've been voted as um, the most employable uh, university, so our graduates are recognised as highly employable, and also our career coaching sessions are free, so you can access them every week for 20 minutes, as I said, up to two years after graduation, so um, I think in terms of, you know, the university you've chosen and the reputation and the employability perspective, that's a huge benefit. Okay, 
yeah, thank you. Sorry, I didn't hear that very well. Okay, internship. So um, many employers have structured internship processes and programs, and uh, many of the programs open up their applications to penultimate year students, um, and that's something you need to keep um, an eye out. Having said that, um, throughout your university, it's really important to um, be proactive in your job search. So even though there might not be a structured internship process, um, it's looking out for any opportunity where you can gain work experience um, with an employer. And so reaching out to people that you might be interested in talking to or organisations. The application process usually encompasses a few um, stages for the structured processes and that includes initially an application. So putting together an effective resume and cover letter is really vital um, for you to be get, get noticed at that first um, stage and be shortlisted to the next, in, next stage, which is generally an interview process. Um, often with structured internship programs as well, there are psychometric tests. So there's, uh, you're often sent a link where you have to undertake things like numerical reasoning, verbal reasoning, abstract reasoning, personality assessments. Um, then you move to the interview stage, if you pass that. Uh, and there, you'd be asked a num number of questions and preparing for that is something that we can help you with in terms of mock interviews. Um, and then, finally, uh, you'll have the reference check pro process uh, generally. So we can actually help you with every step of that process by providing opportunities to practice information um, and really guide you through that. For example, over the weekend, you know, I received a really positive message from a student that I'd helped last week. She'd seen me for a number of mock interviews. She got through that first interview process and now she's through to the second round next week. So that's always rewarding and very pleasing. Um, so we can de definitely help you through that, through each stage of that process. Okay, so that it's a kind of like a multi-layered question. So it, I guess it depends um, who you are. Um, so as postgraduate students, you can borrow up to 50 books. And the, the normal borrowing period is four weeks and you can renew up to four months, so up to 16 weeks. If you are postgraduate students, however, you can borrow up to 100 books and um, the normal borrowing period is six months and you can renew up to two years. However, in saying that though, um, we have a lot of resources that is actually considered as um, course list items. So if it's course list items, you can only borrow for seven days. Obviously, you know, because you have to share with other students. We have a wonderful security um, system on campus for students. And there are lots of uh, emergency buttons around on the campus area as well. So you will usually find very near, wherever you are on campus, somewhere that you can check in, um, press a, a button that alerts security. They'll come to you fairly quickly. They'll talk to you briefly, assess what's going on for you. So I think we do have a really good on-campus presence for the safety of students. I can actually add to that as well. Um, the main library actually opens until pretty late. So the main library opens from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. Um, and it's staffed by the security guards. So security guard presence um, all day, every day. And if you are in the lower campus, so there is the law library, which is open 24 seven. You don't have to be law students. You're allowed to actually access the library. It's for everybody. Um, after 5 p.m., you need to swap your student card to enter, and there is always a security guard in there. So um, there is you know, a couple of places that you can think of to go. I might 
answer that. Yeah, you I think first. you and I probably are going to tag yeah, team yeah. on this one. <laughs> How about you take off and then okay. if I have anything to supplement. Yeah. yeah. Because uh, student support uh, does often speak to students who may be experiencing some difficulties. I realise at this point in, in your career as a student, um, you can't foresee what may or may not happen um, during the next three to four years. But uh, life does happen. There are events that happen. It may disrupt your studies in some way or impact you in a way that you don't feel you can um, carry on as a student in the way that you have been able to and need someone to talk to about that. And you know, there are all sorts of reasons why that may be, but uh, student support is definitely a first point of contact to have that initial conversation in saying, this has happened, I don't know what to do, or I don't know what to, where to go, I'm not sure what the best thing to do is at this point, and we can have a conversation around that. And as, as well as student support, we do have the Nucleus team because there may be uh, some administrative protocols to consider as well, and that they have really good connections with all the services on, uni on, on the university. So do you want to? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so Nucleus comprises of two teams. We kind of have the general support um, team where called tier one, that's where I work. And then the other side is the faculty. Faculty are pretty much your go-to people in terms of any sort of specific information relating to your program. They are known as our program specialists. Um, a lot of times the questions we get from students are, does this course count towards my degree? Can I graduate by my expected graduation term if I take XYZ courses? Things like that. And if you want confirmation, tier two or your program specialists are the people to see. Now, another really common question we get from students um, is, I'm taking this particular course this term. What are the assessment structures like? Am I allowed to submit assignments via PDF instead of Turner in? Things like that. If your question is more course specific, then your academic, meaning your course convener, your tutor, or your lecturer, they're probably the best people to go to. So for general questions relating to your program, come to us, we can help you out. Um, but if you have specific questions about the content in your course, how it's run, or the assessment types, definitely go to the course convener because they're making the decision on all of those questions. Volunteering. Um, there's so many ways. There's so, so many ways. Arc Office is so many programs that you can get involved in. Um, I think the best way is actually just come down and find us on the main walkway today. Uh, so if you find us on the lower part of the main walkway, you'll see a whole bunch of stalls that are all available uh, from a range of Arc programs, and you'll find one of our representatives um, <clears throat> from wellness or sustainability or street team or yellow shirts or um, shack tutoring, sport, club societies, everything. Uh, and most of us are all down there today. Uh, we've got about, uh, I think a little bit over 80 of the clubs and societies here today, so you can go speak to the representatives directly. Um, but I would also just say, if it sounds like something you're interested in or something you're passionate about, go for it. Uh, the applications are typically online, so you may have to find it. If it's an ARC volunteering program, you'll definitely find it on the ARC website. And if it's a club of society, um, go to their social media pages. They'll probably have it listed on there. Otherwise, just directly message them. It's all students, so they're all very friendly and they're more than willing to answer any questions. I think that's a me question again. <laughs> Come and have a chat to student support. That's a, a very common issue for students. Uh, once you start settling into your studies and you become aware of the workload that's involved, you, you might be in a situation where you need to work part-time and you've got to fit that into your life as well. And uh, very often students, uh, when life becomes busy, they drop off the things that are really important to them because they don't feel like they can fit it all in. They're not sure how to manage it. We can sit down with you and look at what your life looks like and talk about some of the decisions you might be able to make to make this journey uh, productive for you, feel like you're back in control, back in the driver's seat of your life. And they're really important conversations to have good skills to build as a person, not just as a student, that can carry you on 
way beyond university. And it's, it's amazing what a difference you can make just having even one conversation about these things can really help. Oh, I might actually just add on to that in terms of, especially if you're balancing your studies and social, um, definitely consider joining a club or society that represents your studies because then you can kind of hit two, two birds with one stone there. You can get your social in by meeting other people in your course, but also uh, be in the relevant field of where you want to be, um, especially because they will probably be taking the same courses as you. So as we were mentioning before, you can find a study buddy through that, find someone who's taking the same course, line up your timetable so you get to be together. Um, but also, when it comes to um, crunch time in week eight, we run a, a week-long event called Stress Less Week. Uh, so if you're coming out of class and you just need somewhere that you want to do some painting or you want to come pet an alpaca, um, we offer just some fun things to so take a break. And like, um, particularly in that time, I remember uh, me as a student, I would sit there and go, I've got no time for anything. I've got to go home and like study, study, study. Um, but that. I mean, sometimes that is true, but often not. You can spend a couple hours just out in the sun and enjoy um, the range of services and social life that we have here at UNSW. Okay, so the next question is about Moodle. Is Moodle hard at Aboriginal Pathworks? Sorry. The question is, is Moodle... Is hard at Aboriginal Pathworks? How important do you want to Okay. So generally, that's the main platform for most of the subjects. However, if you are from different departments, uh, for example, CSE or computer science, they have their different plat platform. Uh, so not to worry because uh, generally in the first week of your first day of your class, the lecturer normally tells where is your course content site. Content site. So you, uh, mostly it's in the Moodle. If it's not in the Moodle, they'll, pro they'll provide you with the correct link um, to where to get the course content and assessment. Super, super common question. Um, I want to preface by first saying concession open cards are only eligible for Australian citizens um, and Australian permanent residents. So I'm really sorry to all the international students in the room and all the New Zealand citizens because unfortunately you're not eligible. Um, now, for domestic students, the requirement for being eligible for a concession opal is that you have to be enrolled into a full time study load. A full time study load is six courses across a year or a minimum of two per term. So the short answer to the question is yes, if you take two courses a term, you will be eligible and you will continue to receive your OPAL concession benefits. Um, in the case that you're enrolled six courses in a year and you take one course per term, you will be okay because you still have that six course across the year. Um, however, if you only take one course a term, you'll be considered part-time and you will have your OPAL concession canceled. So. Maybe something, something to think about before you drop that course. Amazing, thank you. So the next question is, is there free stable Wi-Fi specifically for students because they can only see you in a stubby guest? Yes, UniWide and Edgerome are the two, I believe. Um, and you just log in with your ZID and your ZPass, same as your MyUNSW login. Perfect, thank you. Um, the next question is, we, oh, yep, awesome. So does Food Hub have vegan options? Yes, <laughs> is the short answer to that. Uh, they have groceries um, that are fresh food, uh, fruit and vegetables, but also um, packaged goods. And it more or less depends on what is donated on the week. So it does vary week to week, um, but yes. The answer. Amazing, thank you for that. Um, looking at the next question, we've got who can I speak to to discuss concerns around enrollment and being waitlisted? Hello again, um, Nucleus. Please come to us, we can help you with most of those queries. Um, if it is something that requires a little bit more program specific advice, we will refer you to um, the faculty. But come to us in the first instance most of the time we will be able to help you. 
Thank you for that. Awesome. Um, let's see if we've got another one. <laughs> All right. Well, in the meantime, while we're waiting, oh, can we submit assignments via turn it in multiple times before final submission? Uh, okay, that, I think that's my question. Uh, so it depends. Um, it depends on the course convener, how they set up Turnitin. Some course convener allow you to s multiple submit, some don't. It depends on the uh, assessment itself. Uh, also, Turnitin, there is a thing called similarity check. So that also depends on the course convener if, you, if they allow you to see the similarity check before you do the resubmission. So if, in case if you don't see it, uh, if you wanted to clarify, feel free to contact your course convener just to double check if you're allowed to or not. Amazing, thank you. Is there any printer and PC that we can use inside the library? Um, yes, we have um, multiple printers on each floor um, in the library. We have also some uh, PCs available for students but we also have laptops as well. So we have a vending machine where you can actually borrow laptops, but you can only borrow the laptops for four hours. The reason why it's only four hours is because it's the battery life of the, of the laptop. Thank you for that. So this next question is pretty subjective, so I'll open it to all of you. What do you believe is the key to thriving at UNSW? Maybe I'll, can I have a go at that? <laughs> I haven't spoken much, so um, I think that a lot of the information that's being provided, I think it, it can be overwhelming. There's so much you can do. There's so many activities you can get involved in. Um, but I think it's small steps. So um, every term, and in terms of that time management that we've been talking about as well, you know, look at the offerings that, for example, UNSW employability offer and the other areas, and really plan out your time. Like if you know in one term you know, you're going to be very busy. Maybe um, put the program that you want to do, like the mentoring program or the coaching program, to the second term. So I think it's um, getting involved is really important. Um, and there's the planning out and taking small steps. One term you might decide to do an internship. The next term you might decide to do a mentoring program, etc. So I think it's getting involved, developing your skills um, very um, slowly over time and also meeting people and having fun. I think that's important as well. So every time you do a volunteer opportunity, um, experience, for example, you're developing skills, you're gaining confidence, you're meeting friends. Having a part-time job on the side is the same thing. So I think um, getting involved and, and taking small steps to really get the most out of that university experience. And if I could also add to that, um, which is often what people ask me is like, what's the big difference between high school and university? Um, and as you can tell from the panel, what you've heard today, there are a million service and support opportunities available, but the biggest difference with a university is they're all there, but you have to go seek them now. Um, typically within a, like a high school environment, it's a little bit more, um, someone will offer it to you. At university, the opportunities and volunteering, the support service, they all exist, they're all there. We've actually got probably more than what you may have experienced previously, um, but you do have to go find them. Um, and you do have to go seek them out and ask for help. Um, and that is a, is a very brave step uh, to go and ask for that help, but it's all there and I do recommend that you do reach out, take those opportunities and you'll make the most of your time here. Thank you. So this next one is, what can I do if I start falling behind on classwork and assessments? Maybe I'll speak to this first and then hand over to Tracy. Um, in the first instance, our advice is always to speak to your course convener or your tutor first because they are the ones who are teaching your class, so you need to let them know if you're struggling, if you're having difficulty understanding the content or keeping up, they're your first point of contact. Um, a lot of times they might just be able to help you there. Um, they might have the knowledge, they might be able to give you extra resources. Um, if you find that you might need a little more help, then our next step is probably to refer you to student support. Um, and I guess Tracy can speak to that. Yeah, because there might be all sorts of reasons why you are falling behind and we can help you identify um, what's going on for you and what the next best steps are. Um, we often refer students to faculty too as a first call just to see what may be possible. Often when we start falling behind, uh, we start to feel like 
uh, it's too late to do anything about it. I can't, it's, I've left it too late. They're, they're very common feelings to have and we encourage you not to assume that. We encourage you to speak to someone really early on as soon as you recognise that you're starting to fall behind and feel overwhelmed. Don't assume it's too late to do anything about. Uh, we can often get a student back on track if they talk to us or, or the nucleus soon enough. Yeah. And I can actually also add, um, before it's, it gets too late, um, the library also has a lot of workshops available for students. So we're actually partnering up with academic skills team. So we have uh, from note taking, doing presentation, finding literature, those kind of uh, workshops available. And um, we actually have in those um, workshops online. So you can actually have a look what's available to you and have a look at also um, resources available from the library. So the library does not just provide you with books and articles. There are librarians, you know, subject specialist librarians where you can actually make an appointment if you have any questions about your research questions, your assignments, feel free to make an appointment with us. Thank you. So this next one's a little bit more specific. I enrolled for three courses this term, but I can only see one on Moodle. Right, uh, that's a very common thing. Um, so generally, if your enrollment is gone through, you will see the course when the lecturer or the course convener make it available. So uh, most of the cases it's available on the first week of the uh, class commencement. So if you don't see on the first week, uh, ask your lecturer or course convener, they can tell you it's available or not. And if, if they say that it is available, but you still cannot see, I would say there might be some issue with the enrollment. So uh, just seek help from the nucleus. Thank you. So this next one's pretty common. I want to know how to structure my degree. How should I do this and who should I talk to? Um, as I said earlier, faculty is probably your best point of contact. Faculty understand how each degree within their, um, within their faculty uh, is structured. So they will be able to tell you which courses are core to your degree, which courses are electives and things like that. Um, there is also an, a service that we offer, it's called a program progression check. So when you are nearing the end of your degree potentially um, and you just want to confirm that you've done the right courses or that you are on track to graduate, submit that web form request, it will go to your faculty and they will essentially write you an email back confirming every single course you have remaining in your degree. Awesome, thank you. So looking at the next one, final question. Is there an interview to join the clubs in ARC or are they open to everyone? To join, the, to join them as a regular member and attend the events? Absolutely not. They're all free to um, attend unless specified. Otherwise, um, they may be ticketed, but most of them are on campus and free to attend. Uh, if you want to be joining their subcommittee, directorship or executive, uh, oh sorry, a subcommittee and director, then most clubs and societies do have an interview stage just to vet who's going to be joining and make sure they have the right pick. Uh, if you're looking to become an executive, it is elected. So you'll give a speech at a general meeting, either the extraordinary or an annual general meeting, to go and join those positions. Um, some of the volunteering programs that ARC offers are just by complete, just sign up basis only. So you just fill out the form, put your hand up, and then you're able to go. And some of them require a interview process. Perfect, we'll round that off there. I'll let my speakers go back to their seats. Thank you very much. Thank you.